Hi, Tu here and welcome back to another video from Making Domain. This time we have an overview video over this uh, exciting new product from Telecam. This is a PTZ camera as you can see and this one goes up to 35 times optical zoom along with a 4K 30p resolution. So pretty beefy high-end camera. And the best part about it is it comes at a very affordable, affordable price of under 10k ringgit. If you want more information, you can get pricing from us. But uh, if you're already familiar with the PTZ market, you will immediately know that that is a very compelling price for a 4K capable uh, PTZ camera. So uh, while I explain some things on the feature, uh, we've also been displaying some sample videos we've recorded in the past from this camera. But other things to note in the specification is this has a 1 over 1.7 inch sensor, CMOS sensor, so pretty big sensor as compared to a lot of the uh, PTZs in the market. Of course, we also have a built-in encoder so that you can stream directly from the camera to RTMP or even SRT. Let's take a look at the back real quick so that you will know what connectors you can get from this camera. As you can see here, we have the now ubiquitous NDI connector. This one has an NDI HX up to 2.0, so one of the latest uh, NDI rend uh, renditions in this camera. You can also power up this camera through PoE, just something to take note, or you can use a wall socket connecting the DC connector as well. You can also pull out image from the 3G SDI connector. Take note, this one only goes up to HD if you do SDI, but you can also go up to 4K for HDMI connection. You can even connect through USB to your PC and the PC will read this camera as a USB uh, webcam. So fairly flexible options in terms of your connectors. And you can also connect an analog serial controller to this PDZ if you have one of those. This one takes in a Visca serial if you do that. But you can also control the camera through Ethernet where you can use the standards of NDI or even Visca or IP and even on with so very flexible even on the control front. If you don't want to connect through any of those methods, you can still use the infrared remote control that comes in the box with this camera. So you are not limited to using a full-size controller if that's not something that you want. All right, let's take a quick look at the accessories that are included in the box. There is, of course, the power socket in case you need to connect to a wall socket instead of using PoE. We also have a USB cable, just in case you want to use the PTZ as a webcam, so you can easily connect this to your computer. This one comes in at about 3 meters by the looks of it, so pretty long in case you need to do long cable runs. There is of course the serial connector in case you want to work with an external PTZ controller that is analog. And we also have the infrared remote. As mentioned, if you do not want to use an external controller, this would be a great option for you. Of course, the ever important user menu. If you ever need to refer to any questions on setup, this will be a good reference. Not included in the box would be the mounts. We have the wall mount option as well as the ceiling mount option. These can be included with the meager price of 220 for the wall mount and 280 ringgit for the ceiling mount. Let's take a quick look at how uh, external controller setup will look like. So this is an example of a Telecam IP controller hooked up in the same network as the PTZ. I have uh, set the connection ahead of time so that both are already connected. If you would like to see in more detail how the setup will look like with the controller, you can check a past video of ours where we go in-depth on how that would look like. But in this case, I'll just quickly talk on why you would want to go with such a setup. One of the key things that people will probably consider a controller is when you have more than one PTZ and you need a centralized place to control or manage that. In this case, the controller can control up to seven cameras, as you can see here. And on top of that, each camera can have its own bank of presets that can be easily recorded using the controller. For example, uh, I have uh, set different presets ahead of time, like preset one. As you can see, the camera will move back according to what I've set ahead of time. And this will make it easy for my production uh, when I need to juggle between different cameras and jump between different angles, this will be a good way to manage that using a controller. So uh, we'll quickly connect this camera to see the web UI so that we can also take a quick look at how it looks like configuring this camera. So as you can see here, we have the web UI of the camera itself. Uh, all you have to do is key in the web, uh, sorry, the IP address of the camera into your web browser and you can find it. An easy way to find your web UI is using a software called the NDI Studio Monitor. From there, you can easily find your camera in the drop-down menu and then 
uh, it will have an option for you to access UI. So that's one way you can look for your camera. So the login page is by default uh, admin for username and admin for password. Let's log in. And from here, as you can see, we have uh, a few crucial options that you can access from the camera itself. You get a preview here and you can also control the PTZ movement itself, even zoom and focus. So as you can see here, I uh, can see I have a quick preview of what the camera is showing. But on top of that, we can go into the settings page and this is where we can do a lot of configurations such as the mainstream and the substream for your encoder. From here, also you can choose the resolution and bit rate as you see fit and even the uh, frame rate. On top of that, you can even choose the transmission settings. That's what I mentioned earlier for RTMP, NDI and even SRT. We even have audio settings. Uh, this is if you have embedded audio going in. For this particular model, it does not have a input jack, but in some of the other models, this page becomes relevant if you need to configure any input for the audio. Of course, uh, image adjust would be most of your typical camera settings, such as your exposure, your white balance, and your image. This can be configured through the web page as well if you do not have a controller. And of course, other input important settings that you might need to access time to time is the Ethernet. So firmware upgrades, if they come along, this is where you do it. And if you need to do a hard factory reset, you can even do this from here. So pretty easy to use web page and very comprehensive uh, in terms of what they've taught out the engineering team at uh, Telecam. So there you go. Uh, this is the general overview of this product. And if you're interested to find out more about it, feel free to contact us. We'll be more than happy to set up a session with you to explain everything that you need to know. If you want to do a demo, you can also do. Uh, you can also send in your requirements and we'll take a look and we'll do our best to help you out. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you and have a nice day.